Welcome to the MBA 50 a Business School video series. Um, I'm here at the CEIBS Business School in Shanghai with the Dean John Quelch. John, thank you very much for being with us. My pleasure, thank you. You've been the, the Dean here now for uh, about a year. About a year. And um, obviously, uh, coming to China, we're all fascinated with what China has to offer. What was the, what was the interest for you? Well, I had been uh, Dean of London Business School. I'd been a Senior Associate Dean at Harvard Business School, so I'd really seen um, North America and Europe from the business school perspective and uh, the opportunity came up to uh, do something in Asia. Actually I had been approached um, uh, by uh, other schools uh, in Asia but uh, I really wanted to do uh, a stint in Asia if I did one in China because China is essentially the driving force of Asia. With what you've experienced here, what, what really stands out about the institution? Well, the, the, the most interesting thing about the institution is that it's a joint venture of the European Union and China. It's actually probably the most successful joint venture in higher education in the world. Uh, when you look at what's been achieved here in uh, just uh, shy of 20 years, uh, to be in the uh, top 20 um, of the FT rankings on most dimensions um, is really uh, quite an achievement. And I think where we are at the moment is we've got a sweet spot that we're presenting to the marketplace and, and leveraging very successfully. And that sweet spot is captured in the four words, China depth, global breadth. And what we say is that no other international school can match us on China depth. Um, Harvard, Stanford, they can't match us on China depth. But no Chinese business school, and we have some good quality domestic business schools here in China. No Chinese business school can match us on the global breadth that our students can obtain by coming to CEIBS. So it's this combination of China depth and global breadth that is really core to our differentiation and our positioning. What do you feel that you can actually share with the multinational or the small business looking to um, do business over here? I think uh, the most uh, important lesson I can communicate from my early experience in China is that there are no weekends in China. Right. Uh, and you, you referred to 9% uh, uh, GDP growth. You, you can't get 9% GDP growth a year by working a 35-hour French working week. Um, you have to be working very hard to achieve that level of growth. And the Chinese, I think, at the moment, they, they realize in many ways that they are privileged to be part of a moment in history where there's this tremendous opportunity to um, uh, grow and develop uh, in a very accelerated fashion the economy of China. Mm. And so we find people to be highly committed to that opportunity, uh, both on a personal level but also, uh, in a sense, from the point of view of uh, Chinese history, there's a certain social responsibility to take advantage of the, the, the moment, to take advantage of the opportunity to do your best uh, to succeed, not only for yourself, but for your parents and grandparents and, and for your country. Uh, and that, that, that results in a level of enthusiasm for uh, education, for learning, for leadership development, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, that it would be hard pressed to find in uh, the West at, the, at this time. I, I know that you've sort of made this commitment to the importance of, of research at any right. business school and here at CEIBS. Um, so will we see case studies flowing in the other direction from east to west? Well, I think that there are the two comments I'd make on that are the following. First of all, we are in the ideas business. Every academic institution should um, primarily, it seems to me, be in the business of creating new knowledge, new thinking, challenging existing norms of uh, uh, behavior and so forth. So we are focusing more on research. We are focusing on knowledge creation and idea delivery because China itself is going through an economic transformation from being the factory to the world in which it's primarily been imitating or executing in a factory existing technology um, to being an innovation-led economy and that's a transition that China inevitably has to make and it's a transition therefore that we at CEIBS should be in the forefront of making. 
I would say one of the things that's uh, very interesting to me in China is the concept of Guanxi, which we usually think of in terms of uh, networking. Um, but what I found in China is that sometimes Guanxi is used as a way of protecting uh, people who maybe are past their sell-by date in terms of their job performance versus uh, what they're having to do um, to meet new challenges. And, you know, sometimes, therefore, a concept like that, which is often presented as being a positive when we think about Guanxi in a superficial way, as it's regarded as a source of competitive advantage somehow when we talk about it in the West. But in my experience on the ground in China, uh, it's uh, as much a uh, negative force, a break on productivity, as it is a positive force. One of the questions that comes up with uh, international business is, is the idea of ethics. And again, you know, there's a commitment at the school in terms of social responsibility. Um, how does that apply here in China? Uh, it's a work in progress. Um, I think uh, the fact of the matter is that where you don't have a deep um, religiously grounded culture um, and where perhaps the institutional structures um, that support um, an ethical uh, style of doing business are not necessarily as robust as they are in the West. Um, under those circumstances, there is a certain amount of business activity uh, which uh, is freewheeling. Um, and um, what you might call destructive entrepreneurship, um, examples of that can be found um, in abundance. Uh, but one of the things that is very valuable in China is that 500 people, million people are online every day on the internet. And the internet is serving as a tremendous uh, force for discipline in the marketplace in China. So if it's revealed that a uh, if it's revealed that a particular uh, public official happens to be uh, leading a uh, lifestyle that looks like it's out of sync with what he's likely to be earning, you know that person may be uh, finding photographs of himself appearing on the internet. Right. Okay. Um, if a company um, is engaging in uh, fraudulent activity and uh, someone discovers that, uh, the news of that will be posted very rapidly all over the internet. And likely as not, that company will be out of business or close to being out of business relatively quickly. Mm. So it's curious, but the, the, the internet is really, in a sense, substituting for the institutional infrastructures that are most commonly associated with supporting an ethical uh, way of doing business in, in other countries. Well, thank you for your time, and thank good you. luck with looking after the unruly cats here at uh, <laughs> CIBS. Um, it was a pleasure to meet thank with you today. Thanks a lot, John, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Good luck.